Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange. Today I'm here to do a spoiler-free review of Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. This is the book that I received a digital copy from the publishers HarperCollins. And this is a post-apocalyptic story set in a near future where there is a strain of rabies that is not only affecting the wildlife but also the human population. People are becoming feverish, delusional, and getting an instinct to bite. The story specifically follows a young pregnant woman named Natasha and her husband and right at the beginning of the story they are attacked by a feverish man, her husband does not fare well and Natasha is bidden and is forced to go on the run to get medical help. She reaches out to her college best friend who is a pediatrician and together they go and seek out help in order to not only hopefully save her but also the life of her unborn child. Now, for those of you that are familiar with Paul Tremblay, I'll say that this book has all the classic tropes of a Paul Tremblay book. At this point, I have read everything that he has published and I really enjoy him personally. I will say that this book most closely resembles The Cabin at the End of the World in terms of level of suspense and action, but certainly it's its own story. And if you're familiar with Paul Tremblay, what he likes to do is he takes these different subgenres of horror, but he puts more of a literary spin and kind of does his own take on the subgenre. So here he takes a post-apocalyptic story, which typically in horror is this big global story often told from multiple perspectives and you get to see the ramifications all around the world. But instead he takes a very intimate approach. So most of the story is simply the traveling of these two women as they are trying to get help. And it's very character focused and the characters themselves are, as you would expect with Paul Tremblay, absolutely fantastic. I very much like the main character, Natasha, but even more so, I really enjoyed her best friend. I thought that her personality and character was fleshed out really well. And I also appreciated the inclusion of some asexual representation, which is not something I see often enough in literature. And I just found the characters to be very likable. And that's what works with his books is I personally become very attached to the characters and so care a lot for their well-being. Now, I normally don't like to date my reviews because I do think that it can make them a little bit more stale later on if you're watching this years from now. But I do wanna mention that I read this book in May of 2020. And of course, that is during the outbreak of the coronavirus. And so reading this was an interesting experience because my understanding is that Paul Tremblay wrote this book well before the virus outbreak happened but his predictions were absolutely uncanny. The book starts out with conversations around self-isolation, quarantine, there are fights at the grocery store and limitations on supplies and groceries and it was very unnerving in a way that the book was probably not fully intended to be because it just struck such a personal note. If you are someone that has a lot of anxiety around the situation, I don't know what the situation is gonna look like by the time you're watching this in July or in the future, but definitely this book could be triggering to those of you that found or are finding the situation to be very difficult to deal with. But in terms of adding a level of authenticity to the story, this one was incredible. So those aspects I absolutely loved. I found that it just drew me in and gave me this personal connection to the main character's experience that I certainly wasn't expecting. And again, Paul Tremblay probably didn't fully expect what he had written to come to fruition in such a tangible way. Now, always with Paul Tremblay, his books have a lot of emotional appeal. This book was no exception. There's definitely some gut punch moments and I don't want to spoil anything in the story, but just know that there are lots of ups and downs and it was very gripping to read. If I had a downside to the story, it's just a personal preference that post-apocalyptic horror, even something more intimate like this, is not my favorite subgenre. And I should probably mention that this book, despite the synopsis, is not a zombie book. The description involving biting definitely makes it sound like it is, and I did think so when I first picked it up, but instead, this is very much a science-based outbreak where the symptoms just happen to have a few references that sound similar to zombies, and some of the characters do joke around and 
call this a zombie pandemic, but one of the main characters goes out of her way to continually yell at people and say, no, these aren't zombies. No one is rising from the dead. So it's very realistic. For those of you that don't like zombie fiction, don't worry. You definitely should still check this one out because it's really not a zombie book. It just slightly sounds like one. And I think it's just Paul Tremblay's way of kind of playing tongue in cheek with that genre that is a little bit hit or miss with people. So I think he had a lot of fun kind of playing into the genre, but then really steering clear of it. So if you can't tell, I very much enjoyed this one and would definitely recommend it to anyone who's already a fan of Paul Tremblay's work. You will get all the great characterization, the emotional impact, and the great writing that I have always loved in his previous work. It's all here again. And if you're new to his work, this is a fine place to start. I think it's a good balance of action with characters that you will just fall in love with. And it's a very fast gripping story. And I personally just thought it was a solid read and would highly recommend it to just about anyone. So that's it for this video. I would love to know if I've enticed you to pick this one up. I definitely hope you do. And if you've already read it, feel free to share your thoughts down below as long as you keep them spoiler free. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. I read a lot of horror as well as thrillers, science fiction, and fantasy. Otherwise, I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.